Hi guys, my name is Alexo Avrenin. Welcome to YouTube channel Senior QA Automation Engineer. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Zap Proxy is one of the best ethical hacking and penetration testing scanner. It is a very flexible tool with many API features and good for implementation in Java Maven functional project. It helps to verify unbelievable possible combinations for negative testing and security detections and can detect weak side of application. It can send around 100,000 injections. Why do you need security scanner in your project? If you have already Selenium UI or API test in your framework, then you definitely can add security test in your automation. You can add ZAP Java methods inside Selenium UI and Java API functional test. It will be real advantage of your automation framework. I am sure any QA or penetration tester wants to full fetch automated penetration testing and to integrate that in CI model. Sure, it doesn't hack an application, it shows only potential threats, because this is a scanner. If you want to hack application, manual efforts and knowledge always better, because every application is unique and you should analyze holes in application. But anyway, scanner can check thousands combinations and help you to hack it. Remember that you can hack only your application as white hat hacker. If you try to use up for not permitted website, you break the law. How it can be implemented in Maven functional project? I will tell you briefly how it works. First of all, uh, you run your install zap on your machine locally and implement proxy methods in your functional test. If it's Selenium, you need Chrome or Firefox with proxy settings. It is your local host and some zap port. For example, 8080 by default in zap. If it's API test, all API library or tool has proxy settings. You need to send your API calls via same proxy, localhost, port 8080. In this case, you generate HTTP traffic with credentials, cookies, tokens, and fresh data via ZAP proxy. ZAP proxy scans and analyzes users' traffic by passive scanner and detects vulnerabilities and potential threats in application. It is a very important part. You need to create ZAP certificate for your browser and API calls of your test are failed immediately with SSL error. After you resolve proxy and certificate issues, everything is clear and easy. After that, you can say ZAP to start attacking specific endpoints or URL by different types of attacks. Zap starts sending thousand injections to server with all possible combination in endpoint, header, JSON body and single parameters. The number and duration of attacks depends on how many data Zap collected before and how many endpoints and directories application have. It can take 4-6 hours for active scanner. It can be less for different scanners. After that, ZAP can generate results with alerts and a lot of useful information. The easiest way to use ZAP in GUI mode with user interface. But the problem is it is not automation. Because anyway you need to open ZAP, click buttons for different types of attacks. You can use ZAP clients in Java or Python or API. I prefer ZAP API because it has own UI in browser. You can select any command filling in required parameters and generates API request for your test. ZAP API has different actions as rules for scanner, collecting info, activate and stop scanner, generate report, etc. Docker. You can use almost same structure in Docker. It is the same model. It has some specifics. Selenium Grid is better than Selenium WebDriver for this model. First of all, you need to use Docker images for Selenium Grid Hub, Node, and Zap. It is the easiest way. Selenium Grid can run tests inside Docker via Zap proxy. Same for any API framework. 
any API request can run via ZAP Docker proxy. But in both cases, you need to use Docker IP and Docker ZAP port. You can create a compose file for Docker and add these three required images, ZAP, Selenium Grid and Selenium Node. After that, ZAP has the same style. Java API needs to accept ZAP certificate, Java JRE library consorts. Selenium doesn't need to accept any certificate in Docker. HTTP traffic run via Docker ZAP port, ZAP intercept it and start attacking. ZAP saves HTML reports after scanning. You should do Docker Compose down for stop containers. Why we need that? In this case, we always have new version of ZAP and Selenium in Docker images. Plus, it is more better for continuous integration model. ZAP has many advantages. Required SSL certificate. It means only same security tester can use ZAP for attacking his HTTP traffic. Because if functional test doesn't accept ZAP certificate, ZAP can intercept this traffic. Plus, it should be specific information, IP and port inside functional test. It prevents illegal attacks on your application. Passive scanner. ZAP can detect many troubles without attacking mode and change the data and parameters. Passive scanner. ZAP can detect many troubles without attacking mode. It is displayed problems that are already exist in functional traffic. ZAP always uses new data and combinations for tests from HTTP traffic and from huge storage of many types of different injections. It works for attacking mode. Attacking mode is very dangerous for any not enough secure application. You can legally attack only your application in safe environment. When ZAP collects URL by passive scanner from Selenium test, it can collect many additional URLs from browser as Chrome and Firefox plugins. ZAP starts attacking only URL from scope of functional test. It helps you don't touch random URLs. Always use new combinations and techniques. It is very important because it can replace any parameter in JSON body header in URL and try to hack it. ZAP API helps to check status of scanner. It is very important because you can run many different types of scanners for different endpoints and when you try to automate it, your automation test should know when it's possible to activate next step. HTML reports are very structured and included all information about possible threats and vulnerabilities. Plus, solution and reference about this issue. Possible to create reports in JSON, XML, etc. But HTML format is more visible. You can always shut down scanner and ZAP will stop attacking. Because it's very powerful penetration testing tool, you should have feature for immediately shutting down this tool. It is open source and everybody can scan the system free. ZAP has a huge community security testers. You can always ask any questions and solutions for different programming languages and configurations on ZAP forums and receive answers from project manager of ZAP. Many security developers update storage of injections and develop tool. That is why it's one of the best tool in security industry. You can decorate ZAP and functional test and run it in safe and clean environment. Disadvantages. If you don't want to run ZAP locally and don't activate it manually, you need to automate it. But the problem is nobody will show you the whole solution for all steps together. You can't find whole project on Java or Python. You need to collect info piece by piece on the internet. The communication is not the best and don't provide many real-world examples. Even if you find the whole project, you can't activate it without additional configurations. When you create whole ZAP automation framework, it is not a complicated code. 
but you should combine many additional steps and configurations. If you want to see how automation security processes as proxy, certificates, config file, action ZAP before and after functional test. ZAP is a powerful tool, but not perfect. It is not possible to automate a perfect security process. It just scanner and it runs many possible threads. Analytical info is very professional and important. But anyway, it catches many false positive results and it need to be looked through by human eye. Who knows specific application and separate results unexpected and not expected for this application. Zap has many features, but sometimes you can meet limitation in configurations and integration Zap with different tools. For example, I can't find any possibility to run Zap with South Labs, but Selenium Grid plus Docker is good replacement for me. Open source doesn't have good technical support. It means you can ask questions on forums, but not always can find answer. Zap has very nice API in UI for different Zap actions, but documentation is very limited and doesn't explain a lot of important details. HTML reports. Zap proxy reports have many useful information. Number one, its target endpoints. Number two, methods of used API. Number three, attack parameter with values injection. That is important for application of threads. Number four, solution. How possible prevent this possible threat for your application? Number five, reference. It is article from Avast resources with info why this issue can be important and dangerous. This is briefly explanation how you can combine your security test with your functional framework.